Uh, welcome to another edition of the WOU Shares COVID-19 series. This event is titled Effective Contact Tracing and Aircon Treatment to Mitigate COVID-19 Spread at Your Workplace and is jointly organized by FMM and WOU. We are pleased to see so many participants at this important webinar. Our speaker is the Managing Director of the Sun Sun Group, Datuk Dr. Neil Sun Bin, while our moderator for the day is WOU's Board of Directors Chairman, Tan Sri Dr. Ko Sukun. We're also pleased to have with us FMM President Tan Sri Datuk So Ten Lai and WOU's Chief Executive and Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Lily Chan. Before we start, let's go through some housekeeping rules. Today's webinar is being recorded. The slides will be made available on Sun Sun Group's website. We welcome you to check out the video on the WOU and Sun Sun's websites once it's been edited and to share it with colleagues and friends. So there's no need to take notes because everything is made available. All participants' mics are muted to enable the speakers to present without interruptions. We invite your comments and questions. Please look at your chat box on the screen. If you think of a question for the speakers at any point, just type it in there and the moderator will pose it to our speaker at the Q&A portion of the event. We will try to answer all your questions pertaining to contact tracing and airflow. I would now like to invite FMM President Dato Sri Dato So to give his welcome address. Dato Sri. Tan Sri. Tan Sri, sorry. Uh, yang bahagia, uh, Tan Sri Dr. Kosukun, WOU Board of uh, Governors uh, Chairman, uh, Yang bahagia, Dato. Dr. Neo Subin, Managing Director, Sun Sun Group, Board Member of Lamwai Hospital and Utah Hospitals. Uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen and all participants, a very good morning to everyone. This morning, I'm pleased uh, to welcome all of you to the webinar on effective contact tracing and aircon treatment to mitigate COVID-19 spread in your workplace. Organize collaboration between Wawasan Open University and FMM. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the manufacturing sectors have been the pillar of economic growth as evident from the fourth quarter 2020. Economic performance where the manufacturing sector uh, was the only economic sector with positive growth of 3%, and this performance continued in the first quarter 2021. But the second quarters will be a very challenging after this full MCO uh, and uh, this uh, lockdown uh, will cause a devastating impact. Uh, with stronger growth, where manufacturing led improvements across all economic sectors, with a growth of 6%, supported mainly by a robust export performance. Uh, given that uh, Malaysia continues to be a favored manufacturing hub in the region and houses many industries, especially in Penang, uh, that are part of a global supply chain. It is very obvious that the manufacturing sector has been the catalyst of growth, and it will be continue to be like this. And thus, operations of the manufacturing sector must continue to be supported amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. DG of Health was most recently quoted during an engagement with the business community on July 4, 2021, that the total cases close to 70% were sporadic cases. It means that it will not link to any clusters, while 30% came from clusters, of which 62% are workplace clusters. Factories account for 30% of these workplace clusters. This worked out to be around 6% of the total number of cases that can be attributed to factories. The sporadic cases of COVID-19 are still on the rise. And you can see that from 1st June to 23rd of uh, July, only 54 days, the total cases already reached 400,000 cases, 54 days. And out of this, manufacturing uh, take up about 36,000 uh, cases. That's why it's important that uh, the control environments and the SOPs is very important. And these preventive measures in place at the workplace, also workers' housing, is critical. 
with the virus in the community, it can easily come into factories, especially through asymptomatic cases. What is more frustrating is that the source of infection then is often not traced back to the community, but to the workplace where more workers are tested as a result of one confirmed infection. This in turn is classified as a workplace cluster by the authorities, giving rise to the misconception that workplace is the primary source of infection. And based on FMM's own analysis of the official data published by the MOH in their website, Telegram and social media platforms from June 1 to July 19, 2021, the daily new cluster-based cases reported have ranged between 3% to 19% of the overall cases reported daily. In addition, new manufacturing cluster cases over the same period as a percentage of the overall daily cases reported have ranged between 0.3% to 7.3%. It is very clear uh, that cases linked to clusters, especially marine clusters, are low. Although the emerging sectors continue to ensure strict adherence to the COVID-19 SOPs, as the virus is in the community, more preventive measures are needed to protect employees and to limit the risk of company-wide outbreaks. It is therefore important for us to identify strategies and new approaches to prevent and quickly contain the spread of the virus in the workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us today uh, Dr. Dr. Neo Subin, who is a managing director of Sunsun Group of companies to share with us, based on his years of industry experience, COVID-19 mitigation strategies to assist business better the pandemic. Participants are strongly encouraged to take all full advantage of the Q&A sections to share your views and raise your queries as well as seek clarification from Dr. Dr. Neo. I also would like to say a big thank you to Tansri Dr. Kao Sukun uh, who take the initiative uh, to kickstart this today's uh, webinar. This is very critical at this moment so that every one of us, especially the factories, uh, manufacturing sectors, know how to mitigate our risk. Thank you, uh, Tansri Dr. Kao Sukun. On this note, I would like to invite Dr. Dr. Neo to deliver his presentations for all of us. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tan Sri So, uh, for your uh, kind words and uh, very positive approach to uh, this challenge that we are all facing. Uh, and I want to thank FMM for collaborating uh, with WOU uh, in this very important uh, event uh, and we hope that uh, we will be able to co-host uh, a series of other similar talks uh, especially by Dato Sri, uh, Dr. Dato Dr. Neo Subin. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Neo with us. Uh, he has a very unique uh, expertise and uh, vast experience uh, combining uh, his experience as a research scientist still practicing in biochemistry and in the biomedical field and his uh, uh, 40 years of experience as the uh, uh, an industrial leader and also on the board of two big hospitals, uh, the Lam Hua Yi and Utah. Uh, so uh, without much ado, uh, let us uh, invite uh, Dato Dr. Neil to uh, make his presentation. But I just want to say that uh, if you have any comments or questions, please use the chat box. You type in and we have people monitoring uh, your questions and combining it with questions from other people. Uh, then I will serve as your spokesman uh, to post the question to uh, Dr. Neil for his answer. So over to you, uh, Sunbin. Thank you. Uh, you are mute. You are mute. Sunbin, you are mute. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tantri Kong, um, Sukun. Um, 
Are you, are you hinting that you're going to recommend me for Dato Sri soon? <laughs> Just joking. We are too old for that. Huh? Okay, Tan Sri uh, so I think brought up a very important point. The virus is in the community. You cannot prevent COVID patients, your own staff coming into your company that have COVID-19. Every day almost now, every at least every twice a week, we have COVID-19 staff coming in. Last week, even a lady that was on maternity leave came into back to work and she was positive. So you cannot stop COVID-19 staff from coming to your factory because they, are, they don't have fever, they don't have a cough, right? So this is actually the problem, right? But you have to have 100% COVID-free status of your company. If you don't have, KKM or MOH will come and close you down, right? And also, it's very bad publicity. Let's say you're making uh, baby food or something and you, you, you announce to the whole world that your factory closed down for three weeks because of uh, COVID. Nobody will dare to buy your food, right? So, so that's the problem. We are having COVID people coming in daily into our premises. And, and, and we are not supposed to have any COVID cases. So unless you can mitigate the spread of COVID in your organization, you are done for. That's why more than 50% of our customers and suppliers have shut down or already shut down before or shut down now, right? Be, be, because there's almost no way to prevent. But having said that, uh, we are lucky. We never had one case uh, of COVID spreading in our office. Where we had COVID spread was in the one, one uh, foreign water uh, house of seven people and one control room where they didn't follow SOP <clears throat> and four people got infected. So other than that, there has been no COVID spread. Even people sitting next to each other, COVID uh, patients with normal people for one or two days with COVID also don't have. So it is possible to institute a system whereby you can contact trace, you can isolate, you can quarantine, you can test, and the more important, you have to treat the air. COVID is an airborne disease. Why are we spraying everywhere? And, and, and you know, you see people spray on the road, the, the drains, everything. It, it, it's not a, you know, spread by water, it's spread by air. If you don't treat the air, you cannot stop COVID from spreading. It's as simple as that, okay? So anyway, that's the start. So basically today we look at the COVID situation <clears throat> and why we need contact tracing, how to set up a compa comprehensive contact tracing system, what is the role of rapid COVID-19 testing in the workplace, the air treatment is crucial, uh, as COVID-19 is an airborne disease, and we'll give you some take, take home messages. However, assuming we, before, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Okay, good. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Before we uh, go forward, I want to say is don't take notes, don't take screenshots, relax and concentrate. All the presentations, including the PP PowerPoints, including the, the forms, the calculations you need for airflow, everything will be our website. Okay, now I can just quickly go there and show you. Um, so don't do anything. Yeah, everything will be here. Our COVID response on the right hand side. So everything will be here. You see all the presentations, individual close contact, uh, contact tracing. Then the presentations will be here. Um, the, the media of, of instruct of I will be using English. But uh, uh, we are going to put a Chinese uh, 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 version of it. So don't, don't worry about trying to take notes or everything. Concentrate on what I'm going to tell you because it's very important um, if you want to prevent COVID from spreading in your workplace. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Two days, three days ago, we had 17,000. Yesterday, we had 16,000. And you know, on June 1st, uh, we had 7,000. Uh, that's when I think we shut down. And uh, we have more than double after shutting down for two months. So a lot of you pro probably want to ask, how come after two months of shutdown, the cases are more than double? 
And you can see here what Tantri Kaur is saying, uh, uh, Saul is saying, is that about 60% of the clusters are in the workplace, right? But the clusters, of course, are not uh, contributing to the main uh, COVID uh, patients. However, because the COVID is now in the community, you can assume that a lot of your workers are going to be positive, okay? So <clears throat> you can see here, we have a situation whereby, um, you know, we have MCO, we have fines, you know, the, the, the KKM will come and find you, the town council, you know, we have more than five, uh, we have been audited by more than five uh, 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 government, uh, the police also came, so everybody will come audit all these things and find you, all kinds of uh, sums, and yet it is still going up. Okay, so what are the possible reasons for this? Well, the first reason is probably uh, uh, a very probable one. And we have seen this in the UK, we're seeing it in the US, we're seeing this in Japan, we're seeing this in almost every country. The new Delta variant is three to four times more infectious. So your existing control measures may not be adequate. So what was okay for the British, South African and the original variant is no longer okay. So if the variant is four times more infectious, your system will be four times more effective. The other thing is the SOP is not in place or not being strictly followed. Now, this is more likely not being strictly followed. If you don't follow SOP strictly, you can do whatever you want. You can't control it. Not able to do contact tracing and therefore cannot isolate COVID-19 patients and their close contact. Once you cannot isolate you, who, who is a, contact, uh, a COVID patient and their close contact, you lose control. Air system not managed properly, allowing virus to spread in the workplace. This is, the, I think, one of the more common ones. Uh, because many companies, once they have one COVID patient come into their office, within uh, two weeks, 30% of the people are infected. Misconception that vaccination automatically stops spread. Now, this is, again, very important. Vaccination is very, very important. We have to vaccinate to save the lives of our, 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 our staff. But vaccination don't automatically stop spread. It can reduce the, 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 the spread, but it cannot stop it. As you can see, in the PPV in Shah Alam, where 88% of the workers were vac fully vaccinated. But by the time they discovered uh, they, uh, that they had COVID, 45% 40, 40, already contracted the disease. So that's why vaccination could even be more dangerous for us. If you are looking for a zero COVID situation in your company, vaccination actually make it worse. But we can talk about it uh, another day, but it will make it worse because all, everybody is asymptomatic. So then you could have 50% of your, your company uh, having COVID and you don't even know it, just like in the PPV. Okay, so how is this COVID spread? It is an airborne disease, remember. It's spread by air. You, you can clean all the surfaces you want. You know, people are always proud to tell me, you know, I spent a, a few million uh, deep cleaning my whole company. So I always ask them a question. What happens when a COVID patient were to walk in after that? All your cleaning is go back to zero already. So cleaning by itself cannot stop the spread of COVID. You have to treat the air because it's transmitted by air. It's obvious, but this elephant in the room, nobody wants to talk about this. And, 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 and everybody is, is like, you can see the government spraying all the, the whole community roads, everything. It is not a waterborne disease. It is an airborne disease. Okay. So therefore we need to have social distancing and management and sanitizing of surfaces. We have to have social distancing. It's spread by air. Air management is spread by air. Sanitizing is, of course, some of the virus may go on the table or something. What we do is we clean all the public railings because that's really uh, where the virus could be. Yeah. So what is COVID-19? Well, it is a virus with this spike protein. So they, that's why you, uh, all these, they, they always have this spike protein because it's the spike proteins that have these spikes here. Now, I, I think before we go forward, you must understand. You see, there's a lot of misunderstanding uh, on what actually uh, is COVID-19 uh, uh, infection. So basically, the most important point is that you have about, you normally it's average of five days before you have symptoms. But in that five days, uh, the viral uh, replication will have peaked. So you are the most infection on the day you have the symptom and about two days before that. But recently, the DG of MOA says that the new variant could be even two days earlier that means it could even spike two days earlier. So that new variant is really dangerous. But within 10 days, you're no longer infectious. That's why uh, a lot of people don't understand why the KKM or the MOH allow uh, workers to go back uh, within 
uh, 10, go back to work within 10 days without testing. Why you cannot test? Because of the viral debris. Although the viral replication die, the viral debris is still there. So if you test PCR, this uh, patient will always test positive for at least a few more months. So therefore, you have to understand this, that don't be afraid. After 10 days, the viral rise, the person will no longer be effect, ineffective unless they go into immune dysregulation or the cytokine storm. And that's why you lose your life because this is your uh, autoimmune uh, problem, uh, your, your innate immunity problem. Your body attacks the lungs and the kidney and, and, and eventually all your organs will fail. So this, this, is, a, this is not a medical talk. So I, I don't want to go into uh, details how this works. But remember, after 10 days, if they don't go into a primary phase, they are no longer infectious. So don't, don't treat them like the first case of COVID we had. Uh, after the, the lady came back to work, I personally walked into her office and, and asked her whether she was all right. So a, a lot of people say, well, the boss is crazy. Uh, the one got COVID one or oh, go inside, show die one. Uh, this is ridiculous. Okay, please do not treat your recovered COVID patients like lepers. They are not lepers. They are no longer infectious. Very, very important. Okay. All right. So in the last workshop, uh, we presented four key elements to manage COVID-19 in the workplace, right? So the first one is you must set up a high-level COVID-19 task force involving senior management and department managers. Why? We are fighting a war for life and death, you know. Our workers are dying. Our business is dying. This is a serious war. If the generals are not involved, how to win this war? If the generals sit at home, you know, happily, don't want to know anything, sure die one, right? So it's very important, your COVID-19 task force, the senior manager, including the CEO, should be involved because there'll be many decisions you have to make, right, in order to fight with this virus. So remember, the COVID-19 task force cannot be just HR and accounts. Huh? Huh? One guy calculate how much it costs, the other guy, uh, how many workers you have. No, that's wrong. You need to have senior management, if not the CEO involved. Then you must uh, implement the right SOP, the 3W and 3C in the workplace. Yeah, we have talked about that. And set up a contact tracing and risk assessment program and management the air system. Now, we will no longer talk about one and two because we have already talked about that. If you want to know about that, go to our uh, earlier presentation and it's all there. Now, <clears throat> just quickly, uh, MOH has two protocols for SOP. Follow 3Ws, wash, wear, worn. Uh, avoid 3C, crowded place, combined space, and uh, close conversation. So from then, uh, we implemented, uh, you know, social distancing, limit the number of people in meeting rooms, have press back or even cut up partition, uh, have virtual meetings instead of real ones. Uh, then we partition the offices into smaller units. And then we have, we the most important, close the canteen. Now, a lot of people say, oh, no, cannot close the canteen. If you don't close the canteen, you had it because you can't eat without your mask off. And DG says 15 seconds, you already can catch the virus. So how are you going to do to, to prevent the spread of virus if you open your canteen? So we close our canteen, but we allow representatives to come and buy food. So they have to line up. Even then, they have to line up properly. Then how to change shift safely. You don't let everybody just flood in, then you had it. So we have a proper shift changing, etc. And then we have how to pray safely, how to disinfect, how to transport people safely, how to manage workers' quarters. All these things are already talked about before. So you can go and look at it later. So today we want to talk about um, <clears throat> you know, um, contact tracing and uh, air management. But you must follow SOP. If you do not follow the SOP, no matter what you do, you can put in the best air control system in the world. If you allow people to eat together between one meter of each other, sure, you will spread the virus, no matter what SOP you have. So you must follow the SOP. Yeah? Now, why do we need contact tracing? Okay, let me show you this chart. Let's say you got one person category one, which we call category one infected person. He's spreading to three person, and these people spread to three person. It can be more, obviously. So within three cycles, you have 40 people infected. That's how you can have 30, 40% of your staff infected in your office or your factory. Because it doesn't take long. One cycle, three to five days. So after two weeks, you could have from one people, 40 people. So this is what is happening right now in the workplace. So what do you need to do? You need to cut this chain of infection. You need to, to find out who this category one person is and how to isolate this uh, 
close contact, so-called category two close contact, and then uh, uh, quarantine them to make sure they don't spread it to the rest of the company. So that's essentially what you're trying to do, cut the chain of infection in your workplace. So what are the most important assumptions? Like I said before, <clears throat> you cannot prevent a COVID-19 person coming to your workplace. Young people, 80%, don't have symptoms. So you cannot detect. You can take all the temperature you want, you will detect nothing. And so therefore, you have to assume uh, every one of your staff is a potential COVID-19 spreader. And your mitigation program must be able to prevent them to spreading the virus through all through your workplace. If your mitigation program cannot do that, you're going to have serious COVID infection in the workplace. So therefore, the most important thing is to control the spread of the COVID-19 in your workplace. This can be done through setting up a close contact tracing and risk assessment program and proper management of your air system. So let's, let's, before we go there, let's understand what are the basic principles of, uh, of, of contact tracing. Uh, you have to understand the definition of close contact and casual contact. It's very important. Who is a close contact? Who is a casual contact? Early identification of close contact is very important to prevent further spreading so you can take fast action to contain the problem and isolate the affected people. So therefore, early, fast, effective contact tracing is very important to prevent the spread of COVID. So these are the MOH definition of who are close contact and who are casual contact. So a family member in the same house, working partners in office, classmates, they are close contact. <clears throat> if you spend more than 15 minutes, you're less than one meter away in a confined space, you are close contact. In an air-conditioned environment, an like office or meeting room, if you're there for more than two hours with a COVID patient, irrespective of whether you're sitting next to the person, you are close contact. If you go by, past somebody who's not wearing a mask and he's sneezing and he's, he's coughing and he's, um, he's called COVID positive, you are close contact. If you sit in a car less than two seats away, that means you sit in a regular car, you are close contact. But if you sit in an MPV two seats away, maybe you're okay. Only maybe. That's not for sure either. <clears throat> so what are casual contacts? Casual contacts are people you have been not closer than two meters uh, uh, for less than 15 minutes. Okay, so if you spend, let's say you go to somebody's office and you just drop off some documents and you walk out and there's a COVID patient there, you are considered a casual contact and you will not get COVID under those circumstances. So what are the MOH guidelines for close contact and casual contact? So basically for, for the close contact, you have to quarantine them from 10 to 14 days. It used to be 10. Now they can extend up to 14 days depending on circumstances. <clears throat> of course, they are high risk people. And you need to test them on the first day you identify them and on the eighth day. This is MOH uh, guidelines. Huh? But unfortunately, because MOH is swarm, sometimes they don't even test first day, let alone eighth day. So we have many, many cases uh, of that happening and therefore we have to test them ourselves. Uh, MOH agreed to accept our test. So normally we will send them ourselves. We test and we object, update the MySetatra and everything. They are happy with that. So you can talk to MOH. Now, what happens if they test positive, then become COVID-19 patient? If they test negative, they still have to remain as close contact and quarantine for 10 to 14 days. They can't come back to work. They have to wear a pink bag, okay? So they still have to check uh, for another 14 days after that on their health status. They have to submit a form. We have all those forms for MOH. They have to submit a form every day for 14 days, self-check. For casual contact, obviously no requirement for quarantine, low risk, and you don't test unless there are symptoms. And uh, if they are positive, of course, become uh, COVID-19 uh, patients. And uh, if they test negative, then you are, you know, consider a casual contact, no need quarantine, but you must check your health status for another 14 days. So how to set up a comprehensive contact tracing program? Now, at this juncture, I want to hand over the floor to my, our Sun Sun Group QA manager, uh, Nasra. Uh, she will take you through um, the you know, the mechanisms of setting this up is very important, but don't worry, all the forms will be available for download. Just listen carefully, okay? Thank you. Over to you, Nasra. All right, thank you, Dr. Neil. Morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Next. Okay, let me share with you on how we conduct the in-house um, contact tracing, uh, our in-house uh, setup, yeah? So in Sun Sun, uh, we implement this individual close contact daily 
Okay, so everyone in Sunsu need to fill in this individual close contact daily log. They need to list down all the close contact for the case. Okay, so you can refer to the form actually at the site here. Okay, so they just have to fill in the close contact only. And you can actually download this form from our website later. So who are the close contacts in the workplace? So those who actually meet more than 15 minutes or less than one meter, either or or both. Okay, or those that you are sitting in the same room for more than two hours. Even though you are not seeing the person, but even if you are if you're sitting in one room, Together for more than two hours, they are considered as your close contact list. Okay, so you need to record their names. Okay, so those that are considered as close contact list, the workers need to record the names in this form. Okay, so you can see they have to write uh, the locations where they meet the person, the person who they met, and also which department. So they will keep this record to their individuals. Okay, so once anyone in the company becomes category one or two, we need to retrieve the 14 days records of the individuals. 14 days records of the individuals. So it's very important for them to record and then for them to keep this record because this will be used during the risk assessment, during the contact tracing. Okay, so this is what we implement in the company. Okay, next. This is an example on how we, the, the individual close contact daily log for the day is completed. So this guy by the name of Paul, so he worked in the food lab. So most of the colleagues in the department, more than two hours are sitting together, so it's listed as contact, close contacts. And he also went to the uh, laboratory for testing, so he listed as a lab and the guy also. So this is a complete set. We will, retrieve, we will retrieve 14 days of these records if there's any case um, of contact tracing required. Next of the okay. Let me share with you how we do the close contact tracing in soon soon. So whenever there's any staff be notified as close contact by the family or by friend or by MOH, or if they are being tested as positive, they need to report immediately to the head of department. Whenever their spouse or their family member is found to be COVID-19 positive, they have to report immediately to the head of department. So whenever they also have symptoms, let's say workers have any symptoms of COVID-19, they have to report immediately to the head of department. So the role of the head of department has to immediately retrieve the close contact log for the past 14 days. Those that they, they record every day, no? So they have to retrieve from the worker the 14 days records. And that is the role of the head of department to interview all the close contact workers and fill in the close contact tracing and risk assessment form. Okay, this form will be available in our website. So I will go through with you all. So this one is very important because it's the process where we need to identify and trace the close contacts of category two, category three, and also category four. Okay. Next. Okay. All right. So it's very important for us to understand what are the category one, category two, category three, and category four to have an effective contact tracing. Okay. So this is how soon soon do the management of the close contacts. So those persons are in category one, they have to follow the MOH protocol. If there's no symptom, they will just be quarantined at home or they can go to the quarantine center and they'll be quarantined for 10 to 14 days. And they have to follow the Sun Sun protocol and they have to update their daily health condition in MyStatra and also to the section head on every day through the WhatsApp. Okay, so throughout the quarantine period, they have to monitor their health condition. So if there's any symptoms developed during the quarantine, they need to alert the, mini the Ministry of Health. So the Ministry, Ministry of Health will be advising perhaps um, for additional 10 days for further quarantine from the date where the symptom is developed. If there's any there's no symptom developed okay, during the quarantine, no problem. They just have to complete the 10 to 14 days quarantine. And if there's no test required, the COVID positive guy can just come back to work without any testing. Because even though it's testing, then it will be uh, positive as well. Okay, so when you monitor the health condition, uh, you can, we are using the uh, Ministry of Health um, checklist, so you can refer in our, our website later on. Okay, we're referring to Annex 14C, for assessment tool for COVID-19 patients. Okay, next. Okay, for Category 2, they are actually close contact to Category 1. So these workers are in Category 2, they must inform the department and inform Ministry of Health on the status. So normally when they are under the civilian Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Health will tell them the ping ban, okay, then they will go through either uh, antigen testing or the PCR screening. But normally, you know, nowadays, there's a, 
a lot of backlog. So our company decided, you know, we don't have to wait for the Ministry of Health. We stack in our own in-house system where we will send our workers with category two to go for PCR screening by the approved laboratory. Okay, so once they are tested positive, they will follow protocol of category one. If they are negative, they will have to go through the quarantine of 10 to 14 days they have to follow the Sunsun protocol, update the daily health condition in the Maestratra and also to the head of department on a daily basis. And they need to monitor their symptoms every day for the rest of the quarantine period. Okay, so they can use the checklist, um, which they can, you all can download later in our website. Okay, we are referring to NS15 daily surveillance for COVID-19 close contacts. So we just have to observe for there's any um, fever, chest in, uh, chest in the pain, difficulty in breathing. Okay, so these are the normal symptoms. So if there's any symptoms developed, immediately they have to notify the Ministry of Health. Because the Ministry of Health will assess the seriousness um, of the problem, whether they need to be uh, to go under um, treatment by the Ministry of Health. If not, they will just have to continue the quarantine for another additional 10 days. Okay, so if there's no symptom developed, okay, the person normally on the eighth day, will be under the MOH surveillance, okay, the MOH will test the RTK antigen and they will cut the pain then, and then they can just resume to work for the 10 days. So, you know, like I mentioned just now, there's a lot of backlog, so we manage it ourselves. So nowadays, those people, after the quarantine of the 10 days, they will come back to work on the 11th day. So on the 11th day, okay, at soon soon, we will conduct RTP antigen tests by soon soon. Okay, so later on, the will explain on what are the kits that you can use later on. Okay, so if that's negative, then it will just resume to work. If they are positive, okay, we have to update the Ministry of Health and also um, take further action from there. Uh, Nasra, can, can I yeah. just say something? You move yeah. your microphone closer to you because oh. we, you're breaking up and you may have to cut off your uh, your video because uh, you, you don't have enough bandwidth. So cut off your video and yeah, move sure. the microphone closer because we can't hear you very well. Okay? Oh, okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. All right. So can you hear me now, everyone? Yeah, much better. Much better. Oh, much better. okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So sorry for that. Okay, so we continue with uh, those in category three. So category three are those that is in close contact with category two. So they are actually allowed to come to work but with strict movement and control and compliance to SOP until category two result is known. So as long as they do not know what is a category two result, so they have to make sure they work at their restricted area. Okay, those, once you got the category two results, you're positive and this category three people will be elevated to category two to follow the protocol of category two. And if their result is negative, they can just resume work operation as normal and they're just free to move anywhere. Okay, for those in category four, they're not affected and they can just resume work like normal. Unless the category two result is positive, then they will be elevated to category three and they will follow the protocol of category three. Okay, so these are the um, things that you have to understand. Okay, good. The next. Yeah, so all this information and requirements, we transfer it into close contact tracing and risk assessment protocol form. Okay, we simplified it so you can see all the requirements at the bottom of the form. Okay, and we use this to do our close contact tracing in the company. Next, Dr. Okay, so let me share with you how we do the close contact tracing and the risk assessment protocol in soon soon. So assuming we have one worker that is a COVID positive category one, Okay, his name is Sam, he's from the logistics department. So we have to retrieve all the close contact list for the last 14 days. So the one that he has filled up for the last 14 days, we fill in. And then from this 14 days contact log sheet, we can find that Raju Abu and Afau in category two. Okay, so category two is a close contact to category one. So then we have to retrieve the close contact list for the last 14 days for these three people, Raju, Abu and Afau. Okay, so for Raju, his contact list, we retrieve. And we found that Linda, Fau Linda, Fauzi, and Christina are those that is in contact with category two. So they are put in the category two, cat category three, sorry. Yeah. So then we have to retrieve the 14 days contact list for the category three, okay, for Linda, Fauzi, and Christina. For this round, for Linda, we found that Ali, City, and Dodge are those that are in category four, close contact with category three. So for individuals, for every single individual, Raju, Abu Akau, Linda, Fauzi, Christina, you have to retrieve all the 14 days contact logs, okay, so that you can do the contact tracing, okay. So we see what happened if one of those in category two is found to be to be COVID positive. Example, yeah, if Raju is found to be tested positive, then he will be isolated to category one, okay. So then he will have to follow the protocol of category one, MOH. 
Okay, then in the event, okay, um, he tested positive, then we have to um, retrieve his contact list. Those that is in category three will be elevated to category two. So Linda Fauzi Christina, who is earlier in category three, now will become category two, and he has to follow the category two protocol quarantine of the 10 to 14 days. So they're no longer uh, free from uh, a movement working at the workplace. Okay, for those that is in the category four, they will be elevated to category three. So those early city judge in category four earlier will be elevated to category three. Okay, so then we have to retrieve 14 days contact list for the early city and judge to find who are the category four those contacts. So the list will continue. Yeah? So how hassle can it be when we have a longer list in category two? Yeah, so that's why we have to credit. So this is actual contact case. Um, actual case of COVID-19 close contact tracing for our first COVID-19 patient in two, in December 2020. Okay, so from here, we can actually, we have done the tracing and we have eight people from category two, 19 people from category three, and 65 people from category four. Okay, so... In actual, actually, the contact tracing is very complicated, even though it looks very simple over here, yeah, in the one sheet of form, actually, it actually is very complicated. So if all category two positive, can you imagine, okay, immediately all the 92 persons have to be quarantined or home quarantine or semi-quarantine at the office. So during this exercise of contact tracing, we learn a lot of things. We learn a lot of things. And two most important things that we learn, actually, okay, we must quickly do close contact tracing to identify the close contacts. Okay, to take fast action as soon as possible in order to put in track. Okay, the secondly, we must limit the number of people that we meet daily. Okay, and also to avoid those contacts. Definitely, if less close contact, we less successful when we do the contact tracing. Okay, all right. I think that's all for my presentation. Um, if you have any query about contact tracing and the close contact, you just put down in the chat box. I'll hand over back to Dr. Neo. Uh, thank you, Nasra. So, if you, I don't expect you to understand uh, what uh, everything Nasra said, but all those forms are available, and uh, you know you can always download it. Now, next, we talk about the role of COVID nineteen testing in the workplace. Now, this is a very misunderstood, uh, you know, area. So, you remember beginning of this year, the government said you must. Uh, do RDK antigen testing on all your workers. And recently they said you must do it twice a week. Now, um, we they, I, I think they should know uh, that um, RDK antigen testing or asymptomatic uh, people are not very useful. Okay? Uh, and we will explain in a minute why. Yeah. So basically, there are three types of testing. RT-PCR, which is the gold standard, RTK antigen and antibody test. Now, I just want to quickly say antibody test is no use to us in a factory environment, except to, to, to know the extent of spread. <clears throat> so we don't talk about that. So we talk about RT-PCR. This is using uh, testing uh, the virus genetic material, and you do it through nose, throat, swab or saliva. The time it takes the same day to one week. It's typically high accuracy, but can give false positive. Uh, if used to test uh, COVID patients. That means you test uh, former COVID patients, they could be positive up to uh, one year or six months. Okay. Next is the RTK antigen test. Now, <clears throat> this is the test to show if a person is having active infection. Now, the RT-PCR test is to test to show if a person has or is having or had infection. So it, it is uh, a slightly different. So if somebody has symptoms, by using the RTK antigen test, that would be the right test to use, right? It is specific to protein for the virus. Therefore, if the virus is not active, it cannot secrete protein, you can't test for it. So again, nasal throat swab or saliva, 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, there's quite high accuracy, but false negative can occur um, when testing a asymptomatic people. So this is the difference, huh? so PCR antigen. This test viral material, uh, genetic material, this test for antigen. Antigen is when the virus is active, it secretes an antigen. Okay. Now, <clears throat> why do we need in-house rapid COVID-19 tests? Well, the number of cases is now very high and the time taken to obtain the test is slow or delayed. Sometimes the government can delay up to four or five days. 
And this may cause the virus to spread while waiting for test results, causing your company to close. Because in four or five days, uh, you could have already one, two rounds of spread and you, know, you, you may have tens or hundreds of people infected while waiting for the test. So the ability to test quickly is very important now, especially with this virus being so virulent and is spreading so quickly. Uh, if you can't detect uh, close contacts and, uh, and, and positive uh, people, then you're in trouble. So a new data variant is incubation period shorter, more infectious. Therefore, we need to have faster response and testing. That, that I think is very important. Okay, so what are the tests available at the moment? So last week, the government approved five tests, but there are only three types. Uh, one is, you know, Silexium, Malaysia. It tests the same. It's testing uh, saliva, but this one can be used for testing nasal. Uh, then you have the Korean one uh, that also tests, only tests saliva. And you have the China one. And uh, basically, these tests are about the same. Uh, the uh, selective specificity is 100%. The selective sensitivity is between 91 to 93.3. Now, I will explain a little bit what these figures actually mean because lay people don't understand what this means. What it means is that specificity means that if it is tested positive, then for sure positive. Sensitivity means if test negative, means only 91% sure. So if you test 20 people, maybe one negative could be positive. Therefore, that's why it's useless if you use it for just screening of asymptomatic people. That, that's not very useful, right? So remember, uh, sensitivity is about, you know, um, when you test negative. Specificity, when you test positive. That means 100% specificity means you test positive, means positive, okay? So <clears throat> in our company, we use three types of testing uh, on um, rapid tests. One is the RT-PCR using saliva test. And of course, that's very sensitive, uh, 95% and specificity 100%. And the cost is quite low, 50 ringgit only. So you, why you ask 50 only? Because we collect the saliva samples when we send it to the lab. If we can arrive in the, in the tech lab before 12 p.m., we get results same day. So it's virtually like an instant test. So this is important. Later, you can see. The antigen test, uh, we're using this all test for Hangzhou. There, there are uh, three brands which are the same. And basically, it's a saliva test. Uh, sensitivity, not bad, 93.3. Uh, and this is tested in Sungai Bulo, by the way. Specificity, 100%, and it's only 25 ringgit. And then you have the Malaysia one which is the same thing about the same sensitivity and it costs 35, but this one you can link to my Sitatra. But it doesn't matter, you link, don't link, you just report, it's also okay. So this is not absolutely required, but it's nice if you can just scan uh, something, yeah. Now, <clears throat> this is the test, saliva test we use for antigen. It's very user-friendly, simple, and, and it's very fast, and it's very safe, and it's self-administrated. Most important, self-administrated. You can't afford to have people uh, doing tests because you're not medically trained and you, you can't have you know, people actually uh, administrating tests in your factory you, or office. So it's very simple. You just spit it uh, into a tube and then you add some solution. You squeeze it a bit and you drop it on the plate. And basically, if it's one bar C is uh, negative. If it's two bar C and T is positive. If it's one bar T or no bar is uh, invalid. That means it done the test wrongly. Um, this test, actually, we are now testing on, uh, uh, okay, we are testing on COVID patients uh, that has come back after 10 days. And normally, we see a very faint line. That means that uh, they can detect low levels because most of these people will have low levels of antigen. So we can still detect it. Why do we do this kind of testing? Because we are anticipating soon uh, with the, now today, we are, uh, by tomorrow, all the staff in Pry here, our factories, 600 over of them will be vaccinated already. So we are going to go to a post-vaccination scenario and there are going to be a lot of uh, asymptomatic uh, people. So you need to know whether or not this test can pick these people up. So we think it can, because if we can test uh, people that is already uh, post-infection uh, with a low uh, faint thing. So anyway, I, I, this it's just getting too scientific. We will do this and we'll report to you at a later stage. Okay, so we have to set up our own uh, test uh, premises. Uh, obviously, you must put it outdoors. Please do not do testing indoors. If there's COVID uh, case, then you will spread it everywhere. 
So we have this marquee and then they come, somebody in BPB will give them a test, they sanitize their hands, they sit down, sanitize the surface, they, they spit into the test tube, they do the test, and then they, they, they show us the test, and then they put it into a biosecurity bag and throw it into the biosecurity bin. So <clears throat> self-test antigen kits are very useful during the pandemic. Symptomic cases, the workplace can be detected earlier, limit the spread of COVID-19 by identifying positive symptomic cases and taking the appropriate actions. It can also be used to test returning quarantine staff to ensure they are not still infectious. This is important. And you can report to MOH immediately through my Zetatra, the results. Okay, the RT-PCR uh, test uh, is obviously more sensitive and uh, it can be used to detect to detect asymptomatic uh, people, especially category two, and therefore provide early warning of infection. So prompt action will be taken to prevent the spread. So sensitivity is 95%. Now this is very useful when you're a large group of category two people, that means people who have been close contact with category one. And then you need to know their status because you have an even larger group of category three people whose status depend on category two. Remember, as long as we don't know the status of category two, we cannot let these category three people return to their normal work. So if you can immediately know the status, let's say everybody is uh, negative, then these people can come back to work. So this is very useful uh, when you have a lot of category two people. So now uh, we come to the probably the most important part of the, of the talk on the air treatment. COVID-19 is an airborne disease, but unfortunately we're still treating it like it's a, a, you know, a, a spread by touch. It is not. It can be obviously, but it is mainly spread by airborne. Now, just for let you know, uh, uh, the Slango uh, analysis shows uh, that more than 50% of the positive cases uh, in Slango are because of close contact. Yeah, so you, you can see that it's obviously uh, airborne. So, <clears throat> so this um, July this year, the MOH came up with guidelines for improving ventilation and indoor air quality in buildings. So they have centralized air condition on the left and they have the split cons on the, on the right and then open uh, you know, coffee shops and uh, non you know, naturally ventilated. So what they say is ensure ventilation system is in good working order, maximize fresh air intake, purge indoor air daily before occupancy, reduce indoor air circulation and keep toilet exhaust fan running. Now, these are all very good advice, but it's not very specific. So same thing in the act in a split con, uh, open uh, doors and windows frequently. Uh, I'm not sure how you can do that if your office is, uh, you know, I mean, most of the windows and doors are not openable. So I, I think this one a bit difficult uh, if you keep opening. I mean, maybe you get one worker, you know, a Bangladeshi worker, keep opening and closing door. I don't know. Anyway, uh, now this is important. Consider win, uh, window mounted air uh, ventilation fan. You should have one, but higher level, please. Uh, not low level. Uh, otherwise you draw the virus across your people. So put a high level ventilator, I think that's very useful. And keep the exhaust uh, fan in the toilet and then make sure your toilet is not blocked. I think this is very funny that half of you is talking about toilet. But anyway, um, these are good advice, nothing wrong. So um, this is what we have from our government, but it's not very specific. Like. So I think we need to be a bit more specific than this, right? But of course, these are all good advice. Like. Don't let me wrong. Like. You must do all these things. Like. Yeah. So let's look at um, ventilation. How important is ventilation now? We are quoting from American Industrial Hygiene Association. So it is an airborne disease. So sufficient air change is very important. So if you want to have a 90% risk uh, mitigation, according to the uh, AIHA, you require 4.5 times of fresh air change per hour. But if you want 99%, you need 10 times of fresh air change. Unfortunately, most of the centralized aircon is between one to three times fresh air change and total air change is eight to 12. Now this remember is for the original COVID uh, virus. The new variant, we don't know. We don't have the data for a new variant. So this could be lower. It could be maybe only 70%, for example. So I would be careful if you were just to use this as a criteria to manage your, your, your premises. So this is what it says. That means you have one air change is 40%, three air change 78, so these are all available for you later. So also you need to, this is how you calculate. Uh, let's say our, our office where I'm sitting here, uh, that's how they calculate the total, let's say you have the total air flow, then the fresh air flow, and then you calculate the percentage. We only have 17%. Most companies were between 10 to 20%. And the formula is here. And therefore we found that in the ground floor, 
first floor and second floor in our office. We have between 2 to 2.4 uh, fresh air change per hour, and we have between 11.8 to 14.4 uh, total air change uh, per hour. So uh, obviously, uh, it's important to treat recycled air because uh, 80 over percent of your air is recycled. Yeah? Okay. So how do you treat the air in your, your system? So you can use UVC light in reducing viral load. Okay, so UVC is between 200 to 280 nanometers. And it's very effective. It can deactivate. Uh, well, you know, you look at the data here. It's the uh, uh, ninety or nine uh, percent. Uh, you know, a uh, hundred percent. And here is ninety nine point seven in thirty seconds. So UVC can, uh, you know, in uh, deactivate virus. Yeah. So how do you use it? So where we use it is in the in the center here. You see the picture. This is in the air duct. Okay. And because this is the fresh air filter. Because we already also, uh, I mean, maybe over worry that virus is sucked in through the fresh air. So we put a UVC onto our uh, air filter here so that it will kill any virus that could trap here. So basically use an air duct and in an enclosed room. Because remember, UVC is dangerous to humans and you cannot put it in an open room. And you must have a safety. Yeah? That means uh, outside we have red light. So if the switch off before you can go in, you can't just go in and get set by this UVC. Now, the next is the HEPA filter. Now, the HEPA filter actually is very effective. Uh, it can uh, trap more than 99.97% okay, of the virus. Yeah. So you can show, although the virus is only 0.1 nanometer, but because it has to travel with water, it cannot travel by itself. So the total size of the droplet is 5 uh, nanometer. And therefore, uh, the HEPA filter is 0.3, so it can trap 99.97. So again, very efficient. And it trapped it by just by physical way. Uh, it goes by impact, it hit it. The it's attracted to it electrostatically, and it, it interrupts the path and diffusion, everything. So it has many ways to trap the virus. So 99.7 at least percent, all right? So let's go through these two ways of uh, mitigation. So UV light, UVC, it cannot be used with human presence. Huh? You can put it in a room unless you intend to kill everyone. So you can't. HEPA filter, you can use anywhere. Okay. How does it uh, work? It inactivates uh, the virus through direct exposure and usually used in return air duct or central air con. So if you have return air duct, you put it there, that's the right way. Uh, in terms of the HEPA filter, it's trapped while passing through the filter, can be used as standalone or in the return air duct of central air conditioning. So both can do about 99.7 to 99.9. However, the problem is the virus is, uh, is not inactivated in the room because your UVC is in the ducting. So unless the virus travel to the duct, uh, it's not inactivated. But however, when it's traveling to the duct, it, it could infect all the people in the room. Uh, that's the one problem. Same thing HEPA filter. The virus only inactivated when you reach the filter. Ma. So if the filter is in one corner of the room or in the return air duct, uh, the virus will migrate towards the, the outlet of air outlet and also towards the HEPA filter. And everybody that is sitting or standing um, in, in between the patient and the air duct will be infected. So this is the downside that in the room itself is not very effective. <clears throat> so installation, obviously UVC is very easy to install and very cheap. And everybody should have one, really. It's no, it's, the cost is nothing. The HEPA filter is more difficult. If you have existing ASU system without HEPA filter, very difficult to install. You have to increase the airflow rate, everything, and the cost is very high. So in summary, um, where um, I think you need to say where UVC and HEPA filter may not be effective. UVC light treats air in the return air duct. HEPA filter filters the air in the return air duct or as a standalone unit. If therefore, if somebody with COVID-19 is positive, is sitting in a room, the virus will migrate towards a return air duct or standalone HEPA filter, potentially affecting all the people along its path. Downwind from the HEPA filter, uh, from, you know, from the patient, you may like that. We, we actually, we analyzed all the restaurant infection in China and Wuhan. And we found that people downwind were all infected. That's how we, 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 we understand this, you know, in the early days. Uh, this, we installed this already for more than a year, so we, 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 we were analyzing earlier. Huh? 
Okay, so this is how it happens, all right? So you got a patient here and he's emitting virus and you got people in this room. The air, the fresh air come in through the blue line and then goes out through the red lines. So the virus will go across the room uh, towards the, the outlet. And if there are people here, obviously they can be infected, especially if you sit there for one hour or something, uh, there'll be a lot of virus coming towards you. Or you have a HEPA filter in the room, you say, oh, very good, I put this HEPA filter in the room, sure, okay one. No, it was because it will attract all this virus towards the HEPA filter and the people in between this patient and the HEPA filter will show another the virus one. So, okay, so the virus goes through the uh, HEPA filter in the air duct and the UVC light and it comes back. So it's very good. It will not uh, send the, the, the virus to other parts of the, of the of your office. You will limit only to this room. That's the good thing about having this uh, return air duct and everything. It limits the virus to the room itself only. But it doesn't help you with many people in this room catch the virus. Okay, so what solution do we have? Now, remember in those days, uh, there was no data virtually, right? The data on plasma cluster only came out in September. So we were doing this in uh, May and June. We didn't have any data. So what did we do? So we studied the original data. So, so this data is uh, 2004, published by Sharp. <clears throat> and they look at the, how the plasma cluster affect uh, viruses. And you can see here, Corona Verdia. It's a form of coronavirus. So we say, oh, if it can kill this coronavirus, uh, it can kill our COVID-19 virus. Ma. So it has a 99.7%. Uh, it can kill it within 40 minutes in the enclosed room. So we can see all this data. So this is not new. Uh. Actually, I've been using HEPA filter with uh, plasma cluster analyzer for my children since they are born. So it's more than 30 years already. They have been uh, uh, exposed to this and they are very healthy and in good shape. However, recently, when this uh, COVID strike, they start looking into uh, uh, COVID-19. So they found that it can uh, reduce uh, by about 90 over percent, okay, in enclosed rooms. So they did a trial in Nagasa, uh, Nagasa, I don't know, some university in, in, in this, right, by 90 percent, yeah, it can, uh, it can uh, uh, reduce. So this has only happened in September this year. So when we actually install all these plasma cluster, we didn't have this information. But of course, we used our scientific common sense and we, we knew it would work and it did. And then after that, uh, many other trials were done. Like this is done in ICU in Spain, uh, right? So this is an ICU condition, uh, imagine uh, how important it is. And they found that 99% uh, could, uh, they could destroy 99% of the virus in the air. And this is done by one of the suppliers uh, in China at our air. We buy from these people and you know, you can as well if you want. So they found that after 10 minutes, you will index it at more than 99.99%. So even, even one, two minutes should be enough. Lah, you know? Okay, so how does it work? The plasma tube, uh, which I have here, okay, this is a small one, um, produce a large amount of positive and negative ion. And these ions uh, will, uh, uh, attack the virus and bacteria or dust, whatever, and deactivate it, uh, deactivate the DNA and the protein and make it lose activity and you'll be killed and decompose. So the, basically this, uh, the positive and negative ion attacks the virus or whatever uh, uh, bacteria also can. So when you put this, you also won't catch other diseases, uh, hopefully, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is from this company called Ada Air. Don't worry, this will all be in the, notes, you can go and contact them. So they have uh, large ones. This is for central air conditioning up to, you see here, 1,800 meter cube. So it's very huge. So uh, they also have smaller ones. So we, I think we use three of these or something like this. Yeah. And they also have small ones like this uh, for, um, um, you know, split corn. And they are very cheap. Uh, like these small ones are only about 100 USA, 500 ringgit each. So very affordable. Yeah. Okay. And there's also, if you, do, if you think all things Chinese no good, so you can also buy from AOSIS, uh, Oasis in America. And they also have the ones for the, you know, the, what do you call it? The, the air con, the central air con, all for speed con. And you can see you can also uh, fail line coronavirus up to 99.9. .9, so they can also do so. And this is how they install in America, split con, uh, ceiling mounted, uh, air duct, blower fan. So, you know, you can buy from them if you wish, but obviously they are about five to 10 times more expensive. 
Now, the, the manufacturer of the China one says that if you approach them and you say soon, soon, they'll give you 5 to 10% discounts, what they give us. We, we, we are not their agent. We are nothing to do with them. We, we are, uh, you know, food and feed company, nothing to do with aircon. But, you know, if you mention our name, I mean, some people say, oh, the SME cannot afford. Well, okay, if you can, you can afford 500 to 1,000 ringgit, right? So talk to them, they'll give you a 10% discount, yeah? So this is how we install it. So the split corn, we put it in a blower unit like this to the compressor. Anyway, we will we have instructions how to install in our uh, you know our website. This is how we install it. Yeah, and in the central aircon in the middle here, we install it in the air duct. Yeah, and we also have small units. See, when we first started, we couldn't get these things in in place in time. So we give small units like this to all managers above the uh, years old in the office. So basically, this is a HEPA filter and a plasma cluster ionizer. But it's very important where you put it. Huh? Like this lady is okay because the, the air inlet is facing this gentleman. If he had COVID, he, the air will be sucked into the filter here at the back and then will be killed by the plasma cluster and the HEPA and then blow out to this lady and she'll be safe. But if she had been stupid enough to put this unit under on the ground or behind her, then all the virus will be sucked towards her. And before it enters the filter, then you'll be in trouble. So where you put these filters are very important. Don't simply put it on the floor and it, it, it could make things worse. Okay, so people talk about, oh, iron very dangerous all. So how? So we have measured the iron in our office around 2,005 to 3,000 uh, ions per cubic. So you say, is that high or low? So let me show you. So if you're indoor, like you are now, it's 25 only, very low. But you go outdoor, it's about 500 to 300. But if you go to a park, eh, is about 3,700, 700 positive, 3,500 negative, right? Rural area, 1,002 to 1,000. Mountainous, 13,000 to 1,200. And waterfall, 16, uh, 1,006 to uh, 32,000. So we can see why you go waterfall, the air so fresh, everything. Yeah, it's because of the iron is, is, is making the air fresh. So when we have uh, 2,000, obviously it's very low. So if the if the virus get more, we may increase it to 4,000 now because we are very worried. But we think any figure below 10,000 is very safe. You look at these things. So don't worry about the iron. This is all the people giving fake news. Just like people that you cannot vaccinate all, you turn you into Frankenstein. This is all nonsense. They don't understand. Therefore, they just simply talk nonsense. Please, the ions which are emitted by this uh, plasma and, um, um, iron uh, ionizers are not dangerous. If you follow the manufacturer's device, one time we installed a wrong one, a bigger one in one of the smaller rooms. And immediately the people say, how come uh, I can smell something? Huh? If you smell something, it's too high. You must take out your, your iron uh, measurement and measure immediately. But we have, of course, uh, measured everything. Then the next thing they say, oh, very dangerous. Oh, create ozone now. Oh, ozone can kill you. So the ozone uh, levels are 0.05 for FDA. For OSHA, is 0.1. Uh, this uh, National Health Organization is 0.1, EPA is 0.08. <coughs> so we measure the ozone level in our company. Guess what? 0 0.0000000, no ozone. So it's all fake news. Please do not allow people to use fake news to stop you from saving your company and your people. Don't listen to them. There is no danger here. Okay. All right. So where would plasma cluster is more effective? Because plasma cluster analyzers can deactivate the virus in situ in the room. This is very important. It kills the virus in the room, not in the dark. In the dark, no use, right? In the room is where you want it to be killed. Any virus emitting from COVID patient will be set immediately. By having plasma ions in the cold air blowing into the room, ensuring a constant stream of plasma ions, providing a protective environment. So I sit here, I have my aircon here, I'm protected by a cloud of ions. No COVID guy, uh, uh, virus is going to get to me, right? That's why we don't have spread in our office because even you sit next to a COVID patient, also you won't get it because the plasma is zapping off all the virus before it reaches me. Okay, so this is what happened in a normal place. Like hospitals, they love this. Oh, I got, like even my own hospital tell me, yeah, I got HEPA filter, I got UVC show. Okay, you're right. You won't spread to everywhere because the, this will prevent the spread through the return air. But you see, it doesn't help you because the people in the room can still clean up, right? Now, what happens when you add a plasma cluster? Okay, we add one plasma cluster here, okay? So the air going into the room now from the return air will be full of ions. And this guy is emitting ions. So these ions will zap all this virus to prevent all the people in the room from catching 
the virus, right? And the little bit of virus that escape will go to the UVC or the HEPA filter and be deactivated and go back to this room or other room. So you can see, it's very easy to understand this, right? The plasma cluster can be can zap at least 99% of the virus probably. So very safe, yeah? Okay, so what happens in a room without a central air conditioning like this? So normally it's the same thing. You put a filter here, they say, oh, very safe. But again, you're drawing the virus towards this filter and all the people downwind from this uh, person will be finished. But if you put a plasma cluster in this uh, air con, this will emit out the cold air and all this virus be set, set as well, yeah? Okay, so when you compare these three, uh, I don't go through details, it's very obvious that the plasma cluster can be used anywhere in the room, outside the room, in the dark, anywhere. It can inactivate virus directly, all right? It can be used in the outlet of, uh, of air con, uh, or whether it's split con or air con, and it's proven to kill 99%. And it's effective to inactivate the, the virus, providing a, maintaining a protective coverage, easy to install, cheap, and to be honest, it's very cheap. Right? Even the big ones are only about two, three thousand. I mean, come on, this is nothing. You are factory shut for one week or two weeks or three weeks, you you lose millions. This is nothing. Okay, don't worry about the pennies. Uh. Think of the of the pounds. Uh. We are losing millions or hundreds of millions a day, you know, because our factories are shut. More than 50% of our customers, uh, their factory is shut already or have already shut or is shutting. How can that be? That is a killer to us. Uh, okay. Okay. So in conclusion, in order the maximum protection of your staff using centralized air condition in your office and workplace, you need to have plasma cluster analyzers in your cold stream, air stream, and UV, C, and or HEPA filters in the return air duct. Now, for most uh, smaller companies, I don't recommend HAPA filters. Very expensive to buy, very expensive to maintain. So just use the VC in the return air ducts, more than good enough. In case you're using split corn, you must put plasma cluster analyzers in your cold air stream outside the blower fan and use ventilation fans to increase the airflow in the workplace and possibly use standalone HAPA filters. Remember, you want to put ventilation fan, please put high up, don't put low level. If you put in the window, it's dangerous. Put it above the window. Right, because at the window is you can drag the 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 the, the uh, virus across the room and infect people. Put it high up so it just goes out to the top. You may also use in small rooms portable HEPA filters with plasma cluster analyzers, but you must take care of the, its location. It must be at tabletop level and not drawing drawing potential streams of virus across other applications, uh, other occupants. Very important where you place these portable HEPA filters. So what are the take-home messages? To combat COVID-19, a high-level task force will be set up that to include all senior management and departmental managers to enable fast decision-making and protocols be carried out effectively. You need your generals on board. Treat all your staff as if they are potential COVID-19 patients, especially vaccinated ones, as they can be asymptomatic carriers. COVID-19 SOPs must be strictly followed. You can do whatever you want. If you don't follow the SOP, there's nothing you can do. COVID-19 is a highly infectious disease. Therefore, if we suspect, sorry, I'm going to move away, anyone in the workplace to be COVID-19 positive, we must break, break the chain of infection by identifying their close contacts, conduct risk assessment, and isolate the high risk categories in order to prevent COVID-19 from spreading in your workplace. Yeah. COVID-19 is an airborne disease. Understand the principles of air treatment is very important. So correct decisions and measures can be used to ensure the air system in your workplace is safe from COVID-19. High fresh air exchange coupled with plasma cluster ionizers, HEPA filters and or UVC can be employed to minimize the risk of COVID-19 spreading in your workplace. Remember, you have a zero tolerance for COVID. Even you spread only, KKM will close you down. Once you have a cluster, you'll be closed down. So you can't afford even to have one COVID-19 uh, person spreading to anyone. So rapid uh, COVID-19 tests, antigen or PCR in the workplace can help to screen and identify positive suspect staff. This will help the company to limit the spread of disease by taking appropriate measures to contain and the spread in the workplace immediately, thus preventing the company from having to stop. 
I, I think these are the um, um, issues. Uh, in a post-vaccinated uh, workplace, most of that contact COVID-19 will be asymptomatic. The role of on-site testing will be important. So how do we address that? Now, we are, test we are vaccinating all our staff by tomorrow. So in one month's time, we're going to have to face this problem. So we are now developing protocols how to operate in a post-vaccinated uh, environment. Uh, we will keep you, uh, uh, you know, in, in touch with this. Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you. And uh, you can email us. I mean, this will all be on our website. So you go to www.sunzoomgroup.com. Uh, you know, then you can go to our COVID response. And I, I show you, yeah, just now. You can go there, yeah. You click on the, 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 the contact here, yeah. And then you can download all these presentations uh, yeah, here uh, and everything you need. And the email is also here. You can contact us at COVID-19 Task Force at SunsumGroup.com. If you have any questions, and we will do an FAQ. We'll try to answer all the questions you have as much as we can through the FAQ or today. So uh, I think I've taken the, what, the one hour, more or less, uh, for this talk. So I would like to hand the thing back uh, to uh, Tan Shri Kaur to, uh, you know, to, for the questions and answer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dato, Dr. Neo. Uh, you have actually taken more than an hour, but uh, rightly so. There's so much information and experience uh, to be shared. So it's very good. Now, um, we have many questions uh, posed uh, in the chat room. Uh, in the chat box. So I, I must thank uh, the, the team for uh, separating the questions, categorizing them. So the first set of questions uh, is would be about the uh, close contact tracing. Eh? Um, and um, the question is, the form uh, is to be filled by every worker every day, right? And who keeps the form? Uh, and um, uh, do you check on people um, whether they fill up the form and uh, how do you consider this uh, in terms of privacy? Yeah. Uh, so that's like the, the first set of questions. Um, and uh, I'll answer that straight away. I can yeah? answer that yeah, straight away. Please answer that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's very easy. The worker keeps their own form. It doesn't be a form. It can be a logbook. And we don't need to look into this form until there is a problem. However, the head of department is responsible to make sure they fill in the form. They will have to do a, a check once in a while, right? And there's no privacy issues because you, you have to declare where you go, right? This is an emergency. We are having an emergency in this country, right? If you go to another place department and you do sambong sambong with somebody for two hours, you have to declare that because that could potentially cause the whole company to close down and many people to be infected. So I don't think it's an issue of privacy. The, the staff have to keep their own forms or their own logbook, but they don't have to show it to anybody. The heads of the department to ensure that uh, these forms are filled in daily uh, and, and they are kept properly. And uh, they are responsible to do the contact tracing once there is a positive case in their department, right? And uh, there's no issue of uh, privacy. We're not asking you to do contact tracing outside, you know, with your family or whatever. It's only within the company. You have to tell us where you've been and where you have spent more than 15 minutes talking to anyone. And this information is critical because it's critical to save the lives and the livelihood of the people. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, the other question is, um, there was a mention by Nasra just now about semi-quarantine in office. What does that mean? Okay. It means this. When you have Category 2 people that have been exposed to um, covid patients, you obviously have to quarantine them at home and you have to test them and everything. How about category three people? Now, <clears throat> category three people can freely work provided category two people are not tested positive. Now, however, most of the time the testing takes a few days. So in that few days, what do you do with this whole group of category three people? You have two choices. You keep them at home or if they come to work, they must be in, at their workplace. They cannot leave their workplace. They cannot go and go to other departments and talk to people. They have to be con, 
stay in their own workstation, your own place. Now, that, that is what it means, uh, quarantine at workplace. Yeah, we are quite confident of that because we know our workplace with those plasma cluster and UVC and everything, it won't spread even with COVID patients. So we are quite happy to contain them. But you may choose to quarantine them at home until you have tested the Category 2 people. If the Category 2 people is negative, they all come back. If they are positive, then of course, they are elevated to Category 2 and you have to do the contact tracing all the way to Category 4 again. Yeah, does that answer your question? Well, I think it does. Uh, thank you. Um, there is also a, a, a reminder that the, the RTK antigen twice a week ruling was actually uh, now uh, the Batalkan actually was uh, removed uh, by the ministry. So there's really no need to do twice a week anymore. Um, Dr. Neil mentioned that, but I, I, someone pointed out, uh, and I think this has to be made known because it's actually quite impossible to, to do testing twice a week for all the staff, right? Honestly, it can be done, but it's going to be very costly. And you've got to run out of test kits very quickly because you need about something like a 10 million test kits every few days or something. You can imagine, you know, you're testing 20 million workers twice a week, you need 40 million test kits, you know. Uh, are you able to have so many test kits? I don't know. But it can be done, but it's going to be very costly and it's going to be creating shortages of test kits. Huh? Mm. Then on uh, um, how to enforce uh, social distancing, uh, you talk about um, canteen being closed. How about the smoking area for the smokers? How are you going to monitor them? Okay. Uh, we do not allow smoking in our company our office obviously um, and there are smoking areas but they also have to be socially distanced yeah, they are outdoor but they still have socially distanced they are still have to be more than one meter okay uh, in fact it has to be outdoors and it should be in fact we don't have this problem so much huh, because we have very few smokers but uh, you should not i think it should be two meters huh? i will check we you know we know we have uh, outdoor smoking stations but you have to you know, uh, isolate them as well. You cannot let them uh, smoke next to each other, yeah. But outdoor, I'm not so worried. To be honest, outdoor is much safer. But still, you have to be two meters, I think. Mm. Okay. Um, there are some questions that are quite technical. Uh, I think we will uh, answer them in your website, okay, uh, regarding uh, what's the difference between the RTK and ART and, and all that. I think that's too technical, all right? So now, now I want to move on to the air system. Um, can ionizer cause cancer? How safe are they? And only use in closed room? Okay. Now, obviously, there's no report that uh, ionizers can cause cancer. That's why there's a lot of uh, fake news. Uh, like I said, the sharp plasma cluster ionizer and HEPA filter has been in use for more than 50 years. And I've used it for more than 30 years on my children. My children's room all have that until today. And I, I have one in my room. Like I say, the level of iron which we are measuring in our office is less than that if you walk in a park. So if walking in a park is dangerous and can cause cancer, so can the plasma cluster ionizer. Okay, that's my answer. Because the level in, your, in our office at 2,000 over is less than a park at 3,000 to, to 5,000, okay? So if walking in a park is not dangerous, how can we working in an environment with lower levels of iron? So this is not, not true. And there's no, we already measured the, the ozone levels at zero, 0, 0. 0. 0. 0.0003 3 decimal ppm. So, so I think this is again fake news. And um, as long as you believe in fake news, I think uh, we'll have problems. So uh, if the ionizer is safe for Dr. Neo himself and his children, it should be very safe. Be, be rest assured. Now, uh, the question on UVC, what is the cost of installation and how to check uh, its effectiveness after a period of use? Uh, and uh, there was also this far UVC available in the market uh, can it be more damaging than the normal UVC? Uh, all UV light is dangerous. 
you should not have it in any open space where there are humans. Right? Let's be very clear. I don't care whether it's far or near or whatever, it's dangerous. Okay? So don't let... Actually, that is real. The plasma cluster is not dangerous, but the UVC is really dangerous. You can cause skin cancer. All kinds of things can happen if you are exposed to UVC. Now, um, we, I think this is a very technical question. And uh, obviously, the bulbs are cheap, so you can change the bulbs. Uh, Tianan, how much are the bulbs uh, each? Well, I don't know, 100 ringgit or something. I, I don't think that is a problem. You have to change your bulbs often, uh, you know. How to, uh, to test, I'm not sure. Ask your, this is something you can ask your aircon specialist. Ma. The aircon specialist is fully aware of UVC. They have used it in all hospitals, everything. You can ask the people. No, I, I think, but it's just very cheap. The bulbs are what? I don't know. Uh, can I, you know, Mr. Long? Uh, uh, we'll be around, uh, Dr. Neil, we'll be around, depending on the brand, nah, we'll be around uh, 100 to 300 something. Per bulb. Uh, how many bulbs yes, you need? Yes. Uh, depending usually it's a one box only. Okay, only one box. Anyway, okay, cool. uh, yeah. yeah well, Obviously, that's not a major cost. So if you uh, if you close for one minute, it will cost you more than that. Okay, Yeah. So it's yeah. very cheap, no problem. Change pop every month now if you're worried. Yeah. Actually, uh, the plasma cluster ionizer would seem to be the most effective because they can really zap the the virus. Is that correct? Oh, okay. It's very effective in a room because your, your UVC and your HEPA is not, um, you know, either in the dark or in the corner of the room. So, so when somebody is COVID positive, he's emitting virus all the time. So this virus will have to be carried into the, the ducting and zapped with the UVC or HEPA filter. So all the people in the room are exposed to this virus, right? So you need something to zap the virus in the room. Uh, UVC and, uh, and HEPA filter cannot zap the virus in the room, right? That's the problem. So the UVC and HEPA actually is to prevent spread from room to room. Yes. In correct. the aircon system. But yes. within the room, it is the ionizers, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and, and I must say here that uh, we, uh, WOU, the university, is very fortunate because our whole building now uh, with the advice from uh, Dr. Neil's team, uh, is fitted uh, with ionizers, with uh, UVC and all that. And uh, that's where I am seated now at the broadcast uh, station, and I feel very safe. Andre, you're doing a great thing. Can you imagine our children are not vaccinated? And you ask all you are in the university, you ask all the children to come and sit in a big lecture room. I think you're risking their lives if you didn't give them protection. That's right. So that's, that's even right. more important that your lecture rooms have a plasma cluster. Because you sit there, the one person positive finished, the whole room is finished. So I think you've done the right thing, Tansri. Very, very good of you to do that for your students. Because we listen class. very attentively to your first talk, you see. So now, uh, after your second talk, I hope that more uh, workplaces uh, by well, whether factories or in uh, offices will spend that amount of money uh, to, to fit uh, ionizers. So the question is, uh, hold on, huh? okay. The, the, the question is, how can you order ionizers? Are they available in the open market or how? Okay, you can order them on China, America. We will give you the links in our website. You just link them up. They use just the Chinese one is cheaper. The US one is quite expensive. So if you believe in US is everything better, then you better order the US one. But if you think China is okay, uh, then you, you can order, right? China very cheap. You can directly order from Alibaba or whatever. No need to go through middleman. Very easy to install. Just two wires only, right? This thing, this thing here, right? Just, just, just one wire only connect to the main desk finish, right? So no need to get some sophisticated guy to come and, uh, you know, to, uh, to do for you, okay? Okay, uh, a more general question about the COVID task force. Um, how do you train the COVID task force? Because we are, you know, we have never come into this kind of situation, you know, in our life. And all of a sudden, uh, we have to manage it. It has to be a battle. Uh, as you said, we didn't know all the generals and colonels to be there and everybody down to the single soldier. Um, 
how do you get make it effective? Uh, pay me a million dollars, I do it for you. Oh, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm hoping that WOU or FMM can conduct training courses for people like what uh, Nashra was talking about. We need to make that the training course so we can train people how to do contact tracing. We can train people how to do SOP, how to translate the MOH 3C and 3W into a SOP, you know. These are all the training. We need to give people training. We don't expect you suddenly to become an expert in all these things, you know. We, you, you, you need to be trained. So somebody, whether it's WOU or FMM, must set up all these training facilities so we can train everybody how to, 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 uh, to do the contact tracing, how to set up the barriers, how to have SOP, you know, how to change shift safely. All these things have to be trained. So we are, I, I, I'm more than happy to contribute to this uh, uh, so-called program. If uh, Tan Sri Yu or Tan Sri Saw is willing to set up, uh, you know, workshops for, for training of people and our people will happily donate their time free and, uh, and, and do it, you know. I think this is so critical. We are, we, we are losing billions a day. You know, our, our SME are dying. If you don't, if something doesn't happen by the October, 50, I think country will know that 50% of the SMB may close and 7 million people may become jobless. This is a crisis. It is terrible. We, we have to do something. We're going to sit here and do nothing. It's like us. We are not an aircon company. We are not a, a, a safety company, but we are willing to share everything and open up everything to our competitors. Even somebody even said to me, hey, boss, you do all these competitor close better for us, right? Say no, container work close is worse for us. The whole industry will be finished if your competitor close, right? So I noticed that, you know, maybe my major competitor, Wilma, has about maybe 50 people or something registered for this. Please, welcome. Please come and talk to us. In, when it comes to COVID, I'm not your enemy. The COVID is your enemy. Come and talk to me. Come and ask us how to help you. We have to fight this together. As, as a country, as as an industry, we can't just say, "Oh, it's my enemy. Let him die. Never mind." No, cannot. You will kill the whole country if you have that kind of mentality. So please, country, anybody, set up the training courses. We are more than happy to contribute. Yeah, country, call and country so. Yeah. Yes, I think that that's a very good idea. Uh, uh, country so. Uh, uh, we will explore that, um, and uh, definitely we know who is the master trainer. The master yeah, trainer. We will, we will. I think it's a good idea. That uh, Dato Doctor Neo himself. No, no, no. I I think Nasra is much. Her voice is much sweeter, and uh, she looks a lot better than me. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, only for Doctor Wong. Uh, Doctor Wong. In, uh, you you have someone for the aircon system, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a uh, uh, Mr. Low, very handsome guy, but he's married. Unfortunately, you can see Low Tianan here. And yeah, Dr. Wong, very handsome guy. So let him go and do it. La. Ayah, Tan Sri, I cannot be doing everything. La. Please. No, no, no. no. You, have to, you will have to train the trainers. I, yeah. They are fully trained, trained already. I, I think FMM, FMM can work with you la, to set up uh, a on this. Yes, yes. Thank, I you, think thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But you know, our people have been trained for one and a half years uh, fighting COVID. Uh. They are very fully trained already. La. They are so, they can even do this contact tracing in their sleep, you know. You know, every day we have contact tracing forms posted on our COVID-19 web WhatsApp group. Every day. Because mm. every day we got category one or category two. Category one, every two. So every day you go see, uh, sometimes got five uh, uh, contact tracing forms, you know, a day. It's no joke, you know. It's just, you see, because every day you're going to have somebody that has been exposed to COVID patient. You have somebody who's a COVID patient. If you have a company of about 1,000 people, almost every day you will have category one or two, one. Right, right now, because there is at least 50,000 a day, I think, because the 17,000, 16,000 is just a, probably one third of the actual total, because many people is something, don't test everything. Right. So almost every day, you're going to have category one or two people. So every day, we have at least one, two, three, four, five uh, contact tracing forms being put up. So this is a major job. It's a full time job, you know, managing COVID. It's not part time job. See, most companies think it's a part time job. So what is the solution? You shut the company for 14 days to 21 days or so, all the COVID will die out by itself. All your patients will recover then start again. No? But tomorrow it could start again, another two weeks, another three weeks. It could repeat, you know, every month, you know, until you finish, right? Like here, we have problems getting bottles because our bottle suppliers shut down for two weeks because of COVID. 
We have problems delivering our goods to customer because they shut down for two, three weeks. Okay, in COVID. So we cannot get raw uh, packing material. We cannot sell our products. So that's why I say we will all die. If, if you have a selfish attitude, you don't want to share, then die. Everyone die. Okay, we all die together. So yeah. we cannot do that. We have to share. We have to help. Please. Actually, very importantly, you and your competitors share a lot of common suppliers. And yeah. if they are affected and you don't do anything about it jointly, both you and your competitor will die. Yeah. So, so we are into this as a, as a common uh, battle and it's a daily battle, yeah? almost an hourly battle. So you yes, the the minute by the minute. But more important is this. If you cannot, you see, imagine how your staff feel if you got nothing, okay? They will say, they will go home, they'll say, hey, mommy, mommy, daddy, uh, why your company always close one? Uh? I'm not vaccinated, you know. If I cannot COVID, how? Huh? You're going to have that kind of problem, you know. If you then your customer will say, wow, oh, that company, uh, for COVID one, uh, he's making, uh, let's say, I don't know, cooking oil or what, or better don't buy that brand. So you actually also destroy your own business, the uh, branding and everything. And your own staff is so scared to work. Then they say, hey, Sun Sun, that's right, uh, so good, uh, everything got one, uh, better go and work for Sun Sun, finish, right? So it's also for your own good, right? Mm -hmm. For your company reputation, for your own staff morale. Who likes to work in a company where every two weeks close down one, uh? Die already all like that, right? Mm. Because people are thinking their family also, you know, if they, if they spread it to their children also finish. Yeah. We have many cases where the children also cannot, right? So it's very dangerous. Yeah. Well, well, we have a very pragmatic question about uh, your operators uh, or workers coming in to work in the same bus uh, without air conditioning for more than 20 minutes of the journey. Would that be considered as close contact? Okay, you it's have to gray. record that. Yeah, it's a gray area. But you see, what we did was, you know, one of the first things we did uh, when the COVID strike was we moved all our workers, uh, foreign workers out from the uh, foreign worker enclave. Uh. Here is Nagasari and in that Port Clang. We moved everybody out. And we moved them within 15 minutes of uh, our factory. That means it will take less than 20 minutes or 15 minutes to get them to our factory. And we have, of course, I don't want to go through because we've got a protocol for the bus, uh, the bus transport. But see, basically what it means is that if they are in an open air bus wearing masks for less than 15 minutes and we standardize all the seats and everything before we, they go on board, that is not considered as close contact under MOH. So it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So we don't consider that we close contact because they are in a bus for less than 15 minutes. Okay. And uh, I know it's difficult for people to move them out, but that's, of course, now all the housing gone, no? But we, we did action uh, one year ago, not now. We move everybody out from the, the enclave. Yeah. yeah. So that's why until today, we only have one house that was infected with COVID after one and a half years. Okay. Site, right? If uh, anybody is interested to go into the details. Yeah, you go to the original, we have the, in the, uh, the you go to the original uh, uh, presentation, we have everything there. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, finally, as a very general overall question, um, can you summarize your Sun Sun Group's COVID track record up to now? Okay, I, I, I have to go and look at the, 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 People the, working in the same place okay. with COVID, and they, yet they are not uh, uh, spreading uh, could you show how it happened? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me say first, uh, um, at this moment uh, in our office, uh, okay, we never had a single case of spread. Although we must have at least more than 20 COVID patients at any one time, all together sitting in our office. But even the other day, a lady come back from maternity leave. She sat there the whole day. Next day, she said, got fever, we test positive. But nobody in the room got it. But I can show you examples, uh, let's say, uh, of our first case and then a recent case, which we think is very telling, right? But in our control room, we have one case where a lot of them crowded in and they, they get uh, the, there. Uh, but anyway, other than that, we don't have. And more important, this is the first case uh, we had. Uh, and you can see here. So we got a COVID-19 patient. She was, her whole family got COVID and very sadly, her father died, you know, which is very sad. This was our first case. So the whole family got COVID. She sat here for a few days um, and then she had symptoms, everything. We tested her. 
and she was positive. Now, this was the first case back in November last year. So she sat uh, in the group table here with six, uh, five other people, and there were another um, uh, three other people sitting a little further away. See, the green one are the air duct coming in, and the yellow, uh, red ones are the air duct going out. So it's obviously, uh, the air duct was behind her, so all these virus that coming from her. And in those days, it's not mandated uh, to wear uh, masks uh, during a workplace, so she was not wearing masks half the time. So all the virus was all over this room, spreading to all these nights. But because we had a plasma cluster uh, in the central aircon, nobody tested positive. And that was very important. If this person had tested positive, 90 people in our company would have to stop work, you know. So this was the first case to prove that our plasma cluster really worked. Because this working very close contact, only about one meter from each other only, you know. Okay. So the next case was even worse. We were in our old office, no, plus, no central aircon. And this is uh, actually worse because no ventilation also. And they only had a split con, but they had a plasma cluster. And for some un unknown reason, we had two COVID patients at the same time sitting there, both, I think, contacted through their spouse. So we have one table here with six people with two plasma cluster and the air con, a uh, split con. By right, uh, all these people is finished already, right? Because they are in a small room, no ventilation, but Shockingly, nobody got infected and they were sitting here for a few days, you know, until they had symptoms that we tested them and they. So, so it means uh, that from, we have so many cases, uh, but I'll just give you this the extreme case, two COVID patients in the same room with our staff, with no central aircon, just a split con, yet uh, nobody got it. So this more or less proves that our plasma clusters are really, really working at protecting our staff, right? I mean, you're sitting next to a person one meter away only, you know. How can you don't get COVID? It's impossible, right? And you're sitting there for eight hours a day. You know? So I think this is more or less proof to us uh, that our system is working. And the fact that we have no transmission, we're you know, having 20 cases positive over the time here, it means that, it, you know, it is not... Uh, you, you see, you cannot control COVID people coming in, right? Your staff can catch it from their spouse, their father, their mother, anybody. But you must prevent them to spread to your people. Oh, if this staff, these two staff have spread to everybody here, finish, the whole company closed already. Yeah, because they would close contact with another 30, 40 people and finish off. So I think this is very important, you know, that uh, we have many cases like this. Like this is to show you two cases, the first case and the later one. Okay. Yeah. So, so in, in that sense, actually, the uh, uh, plasma cluster ionizes uh, putting partition uh, between the desk and all that, right? Yeah, everything, right? But, but I want to warn you in partition. Uh, if your airflow is no good, a uh, partition is worse uh, because it's, it blocks the airflow, uh, remember? Uh, mm. if, you put, if you put partition, be careful because you're actually blocking airflow and it could make things worse. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I think we are over the limit already. Uh, but this is not going to be the last we, we see of Dr. Neil. We're going to see him more often because I am going to persuade him to be the master trainer. And uh, Tan Sui So, we will collaborate. To, <laughs> but I, you can see he enjoys sharing his uh, expertise and experience for the good of everybody. So can we give him a big hand and uh, then we uh, will continue to engage you. Remember, go to the website of Sun Sun Group uh, to, to look at all the details, including... Uh, the slides that uh, he presented today, right? And then we will see how we can organize uh, 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 together with uh, WOU and FMM and Dr. Neo to see how we can uh, uh, spread this knowledge and experience to more people. Uh, this is a good spread, not the spread of the virus. We spread this to stop the virus spread, okay? So with that, uh, thank you very much for participating and I hope that uh, you will um, pass a message and uh, ask your friends who haven't attended to go into the website of Sun Sun Group and uh, WOU will also link to that website. So we, we, we are going to do uh, uh, our best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Salam. Terima kasih. Siese Nandri. Wanakum.